Football Tuesday is back. Terps in Indiana this week, Mason Viner and Jack Rothenberg. Uh, good to be back um, after a few weeks off of COVID. Hopefully Maryland will return uh, in Bloomington against Indiana this week, the number 12 Hoosiers. It's a tough matchup for the Terps, uh, one that I don't think many were expecting to be against a top 15 team. Yeah, not at all. They, they have a great offense led by uh, Michael Penix Jr., then they have a bunch of weapons on the offense. It'll be an exciting game to watch, and Maryland wants to win. It's probably going to have to be in a shootout. Yeah, and the storyline for the Terps definitely coming in is who's in, who's out. The university, uh, like, like many, keeping those results personal. We won't know up until game day. There are rumors flying around everywhere, but I don't really think anybody can trust them one way or the other. For Maryland, though, I mean, it's going to be everywhere, the COVID thing, but you just kind of have to keep focusing and trying to keep things rolling the way they were against Penn State. Yeah, definitely. And that, that defense played a big part in that, uh, in that win against Penn State. But uh, like I was talking about earlier, they're going to have their hands full. Uh, they got Freifogel and Fillier, two great offensive weapons on the outside. Freifogel has gone for over 200 yards twice this season. So that just goes to show how good he is. Then they also, their backfield's led by Stevie Scott, who averages just over 60 yards a game. So they've got weapons all over the field. Um, yeah. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the Big Dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. And a guy that you have to look at talking about Indiana's weapons is Hendershot, the tight end for the Hoosiers. The Terps notoriously bad against tight ends. It came out that a guy that I thought was going to torch Maryland, Pat Fryermuth for Penn State, actually suffered a season-ending injury coming up that week. They finally decided to shut it down with him. So. That kind of explains that one, but the Terps, generally a team not great against the tight end spot, definitely something to look at. Another thing, and, and I just realized this too, and it, and it may play into Maryland's favor, is the guys on this roster have had so much experience playing through adversity like this. You know, they had the whole Jerkin situation uh, and Jordan McNair thing and had all that negative attention around them. And this isn't anywhere like that, but you kind of have that experience keeping the focus, keeping uh, the tempo up. I know Brian Cobbs talked today in the press conferences, and he said, you know, he didn't really know what to expect coming back, but it, it looked good to him. And, and I think that's a guy that certainly is a big energy piece, a huge leader on this roster. For Maryland, though, your keys, as you just said, for the defense, it's going to be tough. On offense, do you try and force a shootout? What do you focus in on? Yeah, I think one big thing for this Maryland offense that they got to focus on is not turning the ball over. Indiana's defense is a uh, force of turnover. At least tw they have at least two turnovers in every game that they've played. So holding on to the ball is going to be big. But then I think also getting the running game going early and often is going to be big. Uh, uh, Indiana's given up at least 100 yards rushing in three out of their five games. So if they can get Jake Funk going, or maybe not Jake Funk, just any of the running backs going, I think that'll play, pay uh, dividends going forward. And I think that's one of the bigger spots where you hope Maryland's not missing uh, one of their key players with Funk, definitely a leader on the team. And the other thing is they haven't really found that two back that's going to step up and take over the role. We've seen Penny Boone, Isaiah Jacobs, neither of them have really burst onto the scene like we've seen running backs do in the past. But I agree with that. You know, the running game is definitely going to be key. Trying to control the clock and the ball, something that Maryland hasn't been necessarily great at. They've gotten a lot of chunk plays. You saw late in the game against Penn State, they couldn't really sustain much. It was all big shot plays. The other thing is early, and I think early is a big key for this team coming off of not playing for two weeks and, and facing some of the things they had, not being able to practice is they need to start like they have. You just talked about not turning the ball over. I think in that first drive, getting points – getting, you know, up seven or tying the game or whatever the case is, scoring and getting that confidence to juice back is, is definitely key. Yeah, and just as you said, if, they, if they're able to start off early, if Leah can maybe throw a touchdown, maybe get some, maybe get a, into field goal range, it'll get him going and maybe he'll get, get back into the groove that we saw against Penn State last time they played. 
Yeah, and one thing that I feel that we just have to point out is how great of a year this has been for Indiana. Yes, they lost last week, but and not many people around the country realize this. Indiana is the most losing program in the FBS. They've lost the most games. Tom Allen's doing a great job, and you're starting to see if James Franklin's time is done, if Jim Harbaugh's time is done, you might be looking at, in progression of programs, Ohio State, Indiana, and then right below that's Maryland. So for a couple of years here, we might be looking at a game that, that may actually matter, one that I don't think many fans of the Big Ten uh, see as a big deal, but Indiana's just had a great year. Yeah, I got to agree. And it, it all kind of just stems from the, their coach, I think, like you were talking about. He's kind of changed this program, kind of flipped, like totally flipped from last year, and they've gotten off to a great start, and hopefully they'll finish off the season strong. Yeah, and he's an amazing energy guy. and and. He's definitely a guy that has a passion similar to a guy like Coach Loxley. You know, he's really into making Indiana great. His son's on the team. I believe he's out for the season. Thomas Allen instead of Tom Allen, the coach. A really, really fun guy to watch. He's really passionate in the locker room, really into the game of football and and doing things the right way, which is something that Indiana struggled with, you know, in the regime prior to him. They had some issues uh, with the coaches abusing some players verbally and and Allen came over and he changed it you know completely positive energy again a lot like Maryland positive building a football family and, and doing things right now they're the number 12th ranked team in the country coming off only a seven point loss to Ohio State uh, kind of boiling it down to it since we don't know much about the Terps it's hard to put a prediction on this one but Jack I'm going to put you to the test what do you think happens yeah, like you said, it's going to be very hard to know what's going on before this game actually happens. But I'm going to expect this Indiana offense to keep keep moving how it has. And I don't think this Maryland defense, com- defense coming off all these COVID issues is going to be able to keep up. So I'm going to go 42-21 Indiana. How about you, Mason? Yeah, the Hoosiers coming in as a 12-point favorite to this game. I really don't think you can put much value in that because even Vegas doesn't know what's going on in the Terps program. Uh, similar prediction to you, Jack. I think Penix has a big day. I'm not so sure about the Terps corners, even though they had a lot of good energy going. What happens there? Uh, Indiana 49, Maryland 35. I do think the Terps offense finds a way to keep it rolling. You know, from what I've heard, not many of the issues with COVID are on the offensive line, which is, I think, the most biggest danger spot if, if this were to hit on Maryland. Uh, I think Leah just keeps it rolling, and, and the Terps find a way to score, but it's just not enough with the what I believe will be I think the number is now up to 15 or so players that, that won't be on the team. It's just going to be uh, too much for Maryland to handle. Post-game coverage, of course, is always on TerpTalk.com with the Young Turfs podcast and the Big Dog post-game show. I will see you then. And Jack, of course, catch his story after the game on TerpTalk.com. And as always, thanks for watching.